Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Tonight, I'm gonna to be focusing on taking apart the uh, fuel cell from uh, number 71. This fuel cell was already apart once last year. Basically what happens with these fuel cells over time is the glue that holds the foam to the inside of the bladder uh, starts to degrade. The foam then rubs on the bladder, starts to disintegrate, and then you end up with a whole bunch of nasty stuff uh, all within the jet pumps and you know, pretty much blocks the pickup which then causes fuel starve. So one thing that's very critical uh, going into the season is to make sure both of these fuel cells, uh, both this one and that one over there, which this one over here still has all the foam in it. I'll do a video on that one showing the foam and how to clean everything out. Uh, but you know, hoping this video will show you the inside of a fuel cell, how it functions, how they come apart, and uh, trying something different. We're going with the head mount on this one. So we'll see how that turns out, but enough talking. We're gonna get right into this one. Man, so many cap bolts here. I mean, I guess I'd rather have the fuel cell assembled with many fasteners as opposed to very few. You know? Oh boy. Ah, uh, boy. There it is. Yeah, so when disassembling something like this, I make sure that all the hardware stays together. Always keep a bin nearby. Uh, disassembling these is actually really easy. It's basically just a bunch of uh, four millimeter drive uh, cap bolts. You know, these guys right here. This removes the access panels, uh, and you know this right here, which is the bladder. Uh, this basically allows, um, or, or these access panels thread into the bladder. So before you separate the two halves of the shell, you need to remove the access plates first. So here's the top access plate, and uh, just so you can see. All of that stuff that's sitting in the bottom of the um, of the housing for the pump, that is the stuff that is from, uh, that's all foam that has basically fallen apart and is inside of the cell. So uh, all of the stuff needs to be cleaned up. And, you know, there's still some fuel in there. You can never really pump all of it out, but I'm going to use some of that fuel to uh, help clean out the cell. You know, this is the uh, access panel for the right hand side of the fuel cell uh, here's your fuel filler it's basically a little flap here that prevents fuel from going backwards if the car to flip over here's your fuel feed out electrical connector to the fuel pump uh, this is the vent valve which is also a rollover valve so fuel can't spill out but you know overall pretty simple not in a rush tonight so just using some hand tools don't really want to potentially damage any of the heads of these really don't want to deal with a bolt extraction on a fuel cell so uh, just using hand tools and spinning these fasteners out by hand but they're all loose anyway so no big deal this is the other access plate and again Look down inside the fuel cell here. Uh, you can see some of the foam right over there in the corner. There's some pieces sitting there. Uh, so I'm gonna end up doing is probably agitating the inside of this bladder once I have it apart. Remove all of the venturi pumps, get all the stuff out of here. Uh, use the fuel to sort of agitate everything. 
drain all of the fuel out um you know and then just try to eventually blow it all out with compressed air but we're gonna want the fuel cell to dry before that happens uh, now we're moving on to separating the two halves here tons of fasteners So, you know, I don't know about you guys, but like something like this that has just a million fasteners, sure, you know, like if you're in a crunch and you want to take it apart quickly, you could use power tools, but I don't know, sometimes just using your hands always sort of seems therapeutic to me a little bit. Look, I'm not in a rush right now. You know, it's not like uh, the car needs to be on the track and there's a problem with the fuel cell or anything. So, you know, I don't really exactly feel pressured to take this thing apart as quickly as possible. Just here in the shop after work, day's kind of winding down, and uh, you know, just trying to stay ahead of things. Not really many tools are needed to take this apart, just a, you know, use a four millimeter ball Allen, an eight millimeter wrench, you know, a ratchet, have an eight millimeter socket just in case, and also I have a four millimeter Allen key, and I'm using this stubby 3 8 ratchet. But at this point, we can actually just lift this entire cover right off of the cell. It's obviously all aluminum construction. It's been welded together, but this is the top half. And right inside here, you have this flexible bladder. But really at this point, I can actually lift the entire bladder out. But what I want to do next is get all of the stuff inside of the cell out, uh, including the suction pumps and the uh, housing for the fuel pump. So moving along here, then we have the cover off the top of the fuel cell. So I want to talk about some of the parts that are inside of it, uh, because if you're looking at this, this might actually look very similar to a fuel pump that you have in your car. And uh, in many respects, this is a very similar design to what is in a street car. What you'll notice here is this is our uh, housing for the fuel pump. And you'll see all of that nasty stuff collected in the bottom of it. That is the that is the problem. That is what happens when the foam begins to degrade. And the foam is normally in this area here. Kind of keeps everything tied together. It prevents some sloshing, and that's why they use it. If I come over here to the left-hand side of the fuel cell, so this would be on the uh, driver's side. Down in here, you have a sucking uh, a jet pump right there. And there's a jet pump all the way in this front corner. And these jet pumps transfer fuel from this side of the fuel cell all the way over here to the right hand side the fuel pump which basically sits in that housing the fuel gets pumped out through this hose and connects to this right here and then this basically pushes the fuel through this inline pump and then out of the inline pump it comes out and then you have your connection to the top of the fuel cell and this is how fuel gets pumped out of the fuel cell it's actually very simple relatively simple design uh, but within this fuel bladder all of this stuff resides you have a sucking jet pump here a sucking jet pump there and another jet pump over there so quite a few things are happening inside of this fuel cell and right there you know like i said you could see the problem that we run into is that foam uh, begins to degrade and when that happens um, you know, that is basically the result. You have all of that buildup and all of that's being pushed through the jet pumps. This was an issue that we learned about late last year. It's pretty much the inner workings of a fuel cell. Pretty simple, but uh, though I like to at least see the inside of it and kind of get a feel for, for how it all works. Visibility might be limited for you, but basically you have these uh, little posts in here that sort of hold on to the fuel pump housing. So you have to depress these tabs and then sort of pull up on the whole thing. Yep, there it is. So you have these little metal tabs that lock it into place. Got one more over here. All right. It's not the most enjoyable thing to remove. It's very, you want to be very careful not break anything as you're trying to release everything all right here we go 
Yeah, that's all the stuff that I'm talking about right there. Just thinking about that going through a pump. Not good. That's the stuff I'm talking about right there. That is the that will kill a fuel pump very quick and will kill fuel pressure, obviously, if there's no fuel within this little area right here. So that is all gonna have to be cleaned up. Jet pumps are held on with seven millimeter nuts. They're basically just hand tight. So I was actually thinking while um, I had this apart, show you guys what a jet pump looks like in the forward location in the uh, forward corner of the uh, fuel cell. So this is gonna be the forward uh, left hand side of the cell. So this is basically underneath the, well, where the factory seats would be. Um, but yeah, that is the inside of a fuel cell. All right, yeah, so there you go. That's the stuff that I was talking about that gets picked up with these jet pumps. And when it gets picked up, um, you know, last year in Vegas, these jet pumps were completely clogged up. Um, so that's where you get your fuel flow problem, fuel starve. Not fun stuff. Disconnect one more. <sighs> Want to be real careful with these quick disconnects. Be very stubborn. And you certainly don't want to break it. Oh, man. <sighs> there we go. All right, so our whole jet pump assembly for the Left hand side of the tank is free. There we go. What do we got here? Uh, yep, that jet pump is almost 100% clogged. You see those big pieces of foam right there? This is the problem that we ran into last year. And you know, obviously some of that stuff got sucked through and put into the basket here, which is fine, but we're gonna probably have to back flush all of this uh, just to make sure that 100% of it is out. And uh, I've got a zip tie in there, so can I just snake this thing out? I think I can. Yes, sir. All right, there it is. You know, you can just see, it's just very gritty and nasty. So, what we'll probably end up doing is drain the fuel out completely, we'll let the bladder dry, and then what we're probably gonna end up doing is blow drying or taking compressed air, blowing the whole bladder out, and that should get most of the stuff left over out of it, in theory. Oh, there you go. That's basically what's involved with dissecting a uh, proper racing fuel cell. Not that crazy, all things considered. You know, lots of fuel pickups, things like that. Um, but overall, at least on these TCRs, it's all very simple to take apart. Uh, but what we're going to do with all this stuff out is we're going to check all of these hoses for cracks, things like that. Because uh, any of these hoses that have cracks, especially the pressure lines, uh, you'll lose fuel pressure within the uh, fuel cell and run to fuel starve. So check all these things out backwash all the jet pumps still waiting on a new fuel pump to uh, show up so we can assemble that whole unit over there like i said very simple very straightforward hope you learned something you know as always comment rate subscribe all that good stuff and uh, as always i'll see you for the next one